we come out to a place like this because it gives the mind a chance to look at itself without all the distractions that get in the way when we're living with other people, even though there are other people around here. Our main purpose in being here is to take care of whatever duties we have to do in the course of the day, get them done so we can each have time to be by ourselves, to look into the mind. This is called physical seclusion. And we have to be careful in our conversations with one another so that we don't get entangling. As the Buddha said, one of the ideal topics of conversation is unentanglement, the virtue of seclusion. And so as we're working with one another, of course, there has to be some discussion of the work we have to do. But try to keep that in the back of your mind, that we are, each of us is here for seclusion. And even though you may be hungering for a little bit of company, the people around you may be hungering to get away from you. So you talk about what's necessary to talk about, and then keep it clean. So your conversation doesn't disturb your own seclusion, it doesn't disturb the seclusion of the people around you. Because as it turns out, physical seclusion is not the big problem. Mental seclusion is. Because you can go and sit under the tree, be by yourself with nothing but the wind and the leaves and the few bugs here and there. But you find you have a whole committee sitting there, all these different voices. Say, well, now we've got all this free time, we can think about this, we can talk about that. And they set up a huge discussion group. And you want to learn how to cut through that as effectively as possible, because otherwise your time gets eaten away, eaten away. Or as John Fuang used to say, we just have lots of times. So there's a time to think about this, and there's a time to think about that, and there's a time to do this, and the whole day gets divided up into little times. So we don't really have any time to really look at the mind, to gain some peace, to gain some, some healing. Because the mind, when it's constantly eaten away with its duties, with its responsibilities, all the various things that we occupy ourselves with. It really gets damaged by these things. Its strength gets sapped. And all those little times often offer lots of little entryways for greed, aversion, and delusion to slip into the mind and to infect it. So we want to have some time to sit down and be quiet and heal the mind. The breath helps. Feels good coming in, feels good coming out. If it doesn't feel good coming in, coming out, you can ask yourself, oh, why? You've got the time and the opportunity to really give total attention to your breathing. After all, the breath is the force of life. And if this force of life feels constricted, tight, strangled, It's going to have an impact on other areas of your life as well. So it's good to take time and notice what kind of breathing feels really refreshing. Good all the way down, good all the way out. When you're feeling tense, what kind of breathing feels relaxing? When you're feeling tired, what kind of breathing lifts your energy? when there are pains in different parts of the body. Where do you focus the breath energy to help deal with those pains? For instance, sometimes there's a pain in your back where you focus on your stomach. The pain in your right side, focus on the left side. Sometimes if they're feeling numb in your legs, it's actually because the breath isn't flowing well down the spine. So make a survey. 
take the time to go through the body section by section and offer what kind of healing is needed for each section. I was reading a book one time about this man, for some reason, upset with his spleen. He'd been told by his doctor that his spleen wasn't functioning properly. And so he yelled at his spleen. A few days later, he met the psychic woman who sort of did a little check of him and said, What are you doing yelling at your spleen? You don't yell at your spleen. It's working hard for you. You want to be nice to it. Give it some time. Give it some space to get some good breath energy. Well, this applies to every section of the body. And you find that if you've been carrying a lot of burdens, a lot of responsibilities around, that just the breath energy in the body could use a lot of work. And you find that it gets really interesting. Here it is, your own body, and you've missed parts of it. And as you learn how to direct the breath energy around, you find that you really can get a greater sense of wholeness and healing. A similar principle applies to the mind. If you're focusing outside all the time, helping this person, worried about that person, it's not much time for yourself, not much time to look after the mind itself. So it gets squeezed into weird shapes, and parts of it get starved. So here's a chance for your awareness to become all around. You stay focused on the present moment. Try to expand your awareness so it fills the whole body. Think of the breath being all around you, and your awareness there is. You'll find it's focused in some areas and tends to block out other areas. So as you open up those blocked out areas, there's a sense that just the simple awareness in the present moment has a chance to develop energy, to heal itself. As for any thoughts that would pull you away and say, well, you've got to think about this, you've got to worry about that, you remind yourself, you don't have to right now. I've told the story before, but it's useful to hear it again. There was a woman who one time who came to stay and meditate at the monastery in Thailand. She was going to stay for two weeks, and after the second day she came to see John Fu and to say goodbye. She was going to go back home. And he asked her why. She said, well, I was just worried about the people back home. Who is going to fix the food? Who is going to wash the clothes? Who is going to look after them? He said, pretend that you've died. They'll have to look after themselves. They'll, they'll be able to look after themselves. And so she carried that thought around. Just as soon as any thought of home came up, she said, okay, you've died. You don't have to take on that responsibility. So when you find these thoughts coming up, just remind yourself, you've died. They'll take care of themselves. They can handle themselves. You're here to work on healing the mind. And all those thoughts that dig into the mind and say, you've got to worry about this, you've got to think about that, your past, future, whatever. Just see them as disturbances in the present moment all the oughts and the shoulds that they carry around, you don't have to listen to them. On one level it seems irresponsible, but on another it's not. It only stands to reason that if you get worn out, then there's less that you can do for other people. So here's your chance to strengthen the mind and to give it a skill that is useful not only while you're here, but also when you go back home, because this is the whole point of mental seclusion, is that physical seclusion helps it, gives you a chance to get in touch with the skills of the mind. But physical seclusion is not required. 
In other words, you can take these skills of dealing with the mind, dealing with the breath, and take them wherever you go. You have this sense of mental seclusion even when you're surrounded by people, even when you're engaged in activities, helping this person, helping that person. There can still be part of the mind which is looking after itself. And so the healing process is not something you wait for until you're exhausted and then go running off into a hide in a little hole in your little burrow. But you can heal yourself as you deal with other people. You can heal yourself as you're doing other, other tasks, other responsibilities. Because after all, the breath is coming in going out all the time. And whenever you notice that the breath feels constricted, it feels squeezed, just stop for a second and allow yourself to breathe comfortably. And so you can heal yourself as you go through the day. And then when you find you have time to rest and time to be by yourself, okay, then you can really go at it. Give it your full attention. So we want to work on this quality of allowing the mind to look after itself. Give it some space so it can develop the skills it needs to tend to itself, to care for itself. Realizing that this is not a selfish activity. It's necessary for your health and for the health of the people around you. Because if you give in to the diseases of greed, aversion, and delusion, you find that they're communicable. The more you give in to these diseases, the more the other people around you are going to be picking up the germs. So try to make the most of this opportunity. You've got the physical seclusion so you can turn and, and deal with all these chattering voices in your mind. Throw a few scraps to them here and there, and they'll be quiet. There was a time toward the end of John Lee's life when one of the members of the royal family in Thailand was really misbehaving, and he was the object of a lot of gossip. One time he was, John Fuang was there in, in Bangkok, and some of his students picked up this topic and they were talking about it. And he happened to have some candies with him, so he threw candies to everybody. The kind of candies that you suck on. The whole purpose being as they were sucking on the candies, they wouldn't be able to talk. Have something sweet. And at the same time, be quiet. So as you're working with the breath, think of it that way. You've got these chattering voices. Well, throw a little breath, nice breath in their direction. So be contented and keep quiet so you can do the work that you need to do in dealing with the issues of the mind. <laughs>